Hello. Yeah, hello. Hello, sir. Yes, we are live now. Should we begin? Uh, yes. Uh, okay. Uh, very good evening. Yeah. Yeah. So, hello and welcome to one and all. Why can I hear my own voice repeat? Uh, Shivam, uh, can you wait for two, three minutes, please? Yeah. Okay, sir. Okay, hello and welcome to one and all. Today is the day two of our distinguished lecture series on the occasion of the centenary celebration of the birth anniversary of the great Padma Shri Anna Sahib Jada. These lectures are organized by the Department of English and IQAC of BNN College, Pewandi. Today, we have with us Professor Dilip Bharat. Presently, Sir teaches English literature and language to the postgraduate students of MK Bhavnagar University. He has 24 years of teaching experience. He excels in innovative use of ICT in teaching literature and language theories. He has conducted workshops on the use of web tools for teaching in national and international conferences. He has written books and articles on Thomas Hardy, Kamala Das and Modern Communication and Web Tools for English Teaching. He has completed an e-content development project funded by the government of India. Even his undergraduate college project was on technology and teaching English language and literature, blended, blended learning. And today, Sir shall be sharing with us his excellent insights on this very subject. Teachers trust with technology and teaching in the pandemic. Sir, we're very excited. Please take over. Okay, thanks a lot. Yeah, yeah. What's your name? Shivam, sir. Shivam, yeah, good, excellent. Yeah. Uh, thanks a lot for a brief introduction. 
Uh, uh, thanks a lot even to Dr. Sudhir Nikam for planning this series of uh, talks. And uh, well, uh, now we were given a choice that you can select a topic of your own choice. And uh, as we are going for last two years under this pandemic, and uh, this was a time which was uh, in a way uh, a very interesting time. Uh, uh, it, was, uh, uh, it was something that was uh, very challenging also. Uh, uh, and uh, for everybody, uh, 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 for each and every citizen, each and every professionals, they have challenged, they have to accept the news. Uh, as a teacher, as a teacher, what I have faced, uh, how was my trials with uh, uh, the pandemic and how either teaching or whatever we were doing as a teacher, uh, uh, how was the time? That was what uh, I would like to talk. Uh, and uh, during these two years of uh, pandemic, uh, a lot of new things we learned. Myself personally also as a teacher learned a lot. And most of those learning was uh, in the field of technology or anything that was there, which was connected with technology. So, uh, well, now uh, generally or broadly looking at the time in which we live, uh, we can say that we are living in, uh, in the era which obviously will be recorded as digital era. Uh, if, when we look back down the line 100 years, uh, we see that that was industrial era, that was industrial revolution that was happening in the last phase of Victorian era and the beginning of the 20th century. Uh, and today, in the similar way, uh, is a time of digital revolution, uh, digital lifestyle, digital culture, uh, digital way of doing the things uh, is shaping us, is molding us, uh, is forcing us to, to do things which we don't like also sometimes, but that is, uh, that is what we have to accept. Uh, but I know that for last uh, more than uh, 10, 12, 15 years, uh, around 2006, 7, we all started thinking of technology as a part of academia. Uh, and th that was the time where we were learning a lot that what are all these tools and how that are going to work. Uh, and it was quite an early days of technology also. It was still web 1.0, web 2.0. It was still not the time of interacting live as we are doing now uh, on this platform. But still we were dabbling with like overhead projectors, uh, uh, writing on a transparency and using overhead projector. And then there were projectors in the classroom. So we were dealing with PowerPoint presentations and uh, YouTube videos or any videos which we have to download and then use because the internet was not so fast. We have to battle a lot with buffering in and around the things also. Uh, and we were growing eh? and we were trying to use that how technology integration can play a vital role in teaching and, and learning eh? processes. Even at the level of government policies, uh, also technology was coming in a big way. Time and again, in all kinds of interactions or any all kinds of uh, evaluation of institutes or teachers, uh, this was a necessary question that are you using ICT or not? Information communication technology, are you using it or not? That was a necessary question. And uh, 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 well, uh, we were telling we were using because we were using PowerPoint presentation. We thought that using PowerPoint in the class is using technology in the class. Those were very early days to understand technology uh, as such. Uh, so from today, when we look back 10 years down the line, we realized that, well, we were, we were just in shallow waters. <laughs> we were just dabbling with uh, uh, the things and we thought that we are experts. But it was not uh, the case because that is what Corona has uh, realized to us. Uh, but we were doing those things, and then we were when a few of us uh, became so-called experts in one or another ways because we got some research projects, and uh, uh, we got funding from UGC, MHRD, and to prepare e-content that was in 2009-10. Uh, and uh, a project to th see whether how English language and literature can be taught uh, through technology. So uh, we got some funding uh, and uh, because we completed some research project, uh, people started inviting us as an expert that you have done something. You just see recognized your work by giving some funding and that. And so we started training other teachers also. Uh, 
Now, when I look back down the line 10 years, that is 2011, 12, if I look, then I find that, well, those were not the expertise, which uh, in, in real terms, what we use it as ICT. So nowadays, uh, obviously, we don't only talk, think of ICT, but now we think of digital technology. So DT, yeah, if you want to use a short form, then DT, digital technology, rather than only ICT. Uh, so uh, by, by, by we move on, I will come to D, DT also. But this, this was that phase where we're talking about ICT and uh, these tools uh, we were using. And then we were training uh, various uh, workshops, uh, hands-on workshops we were doing uh, and dealing with those things. Uh, but what was an anxiety is, uh, within me as a teacher or a teacher trainer, if I look at myself, as a teacher trainer in terms of using ICT uh, or as a teacher who is using technology in a day-to-day -day usage in the classroom. Uh, the anxieties were like or restlessness was something that things are not happening. Like you are doing the things, but uh, your students are still not using technology. It is one way. Uh, uh, you are training so many teachers, but teachers go back home and again, they get into their own traditional setup and come with variety of excuses. Uh, what is more troublesome uh, uh, as a teacher trainer or teacher is not that people are not doing the things, but they come with excuse for not doing the thing. And that is, that is really uh, 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 how to answer these excuses. What were the sort of excuses which teachers were giving in those 10 years down the line? Uh, first, like uh, uh, we don't have infrastructure. Uh, uh, and today also you ask people and the same question will be still there that infrastructure is a problem. But in 10 years, infrastructure has grown uh, exponentially. Uh, uh, unimaginable way it has grown. We had never thought that in just, uh, in just 10 years, uh, uh, we will have such a good infrastructure in terms of speed of internet or high end of smartphones, uh, uh, which uh, will be available to uh, uh, almost 90, 95% of our students, learners, and uh, even the rural spaces, which we thought that will not reach out there. So it has, but 10 years uh, has given that story that things is growing very fast things are happening much faster than we are imagining. Uh, and within two, four, five years, things will be uh, uh, infrastructurally looking, will be so strong with the people that uh, 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 the question will come that infrastructure is ready. Are you ready now? <laughs> that question will come to us. Huh? Well, like those teachers like me who are in early 50s, <laughs> uh, and uh, uh, they have still a decade to work uh, in, in the academia. Uh, they, they, their last five, seven years will be terrible. Uh, if they will not change, they will be like those dinosaurs who will be unwanted. Uh, in like the say, yeah. uh, so, that science collects knowledge faster than the society collects wisdom. Yeah, that's true. That's true. Yeah. So this is so like people like me also who are almost now middle aged and moving you know, towards the, the, the downside of the life in the career as, an, as, a, as a professional. For them also last five, seven years will be terrible, but those people who are still coming into this field, if they will be traditional or if they will look at technology uh, uh, in, a, in a different way, like it negatively, then it will be very troublesome to them, to those professionals, it will be very difficult to sustain uh, into whatever field they work. That is what we see. But those days, uh, 10 years down the line, you are training and people come with the excuse of infrastructure, uh, one thing. Uh, and you, even today, people come with that in, uh, uh, question. And my answer, obviously, is that that if you, if you are teaching in a rural space and if you have a large number of poor students who cannot afford technology, then only you have that excuse. Uh, if that excuse comes from the teachers who are in cosmopolitan cities like Bombay or, or the suburb uh, area or Chennai or Delhi or even cities like Pune, Ahmedabad, Bangalore, uh, A plus great cities, B plus cities, uh, they, they cannot give these excuses because uh, these cities uh, 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 have a constant flow of electricity, which is very necessary for all these things. They rarely face the problem of electricity failure, which still 
in a rural space people do face electricity problem uh, and then they have a very good internet also uh, comparatively far better internet speed and other things are also available to these teachers but they also were giving excuses are giving excuses <laughs> even today <laughs> also uh, second uh, the concern was uh, this that uh, our teachers don't know how to use technology like normally when you deal with arts teachers uh, i used to deal with uh, engineering teachers uh, in part of teacher training program science teachers uh, uh, arts teachers commerce teachers so wide range of uh, uh, teachers i used to deal and uh, uh, obviously i have found uh, many many resisting questions from arts teachers in more number <laughs> comparatively to the science and the engineering teachers so uh, I, I, my experience it is yeah i may be wrong in my 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 conclusion also but my experience is that still uh, engineering teachers or science teachers will be ready to adapt uh, with the new changes uh, uh, then the arts teachers arts teachers will have more of resistance uh, uh, in why how, why not to do will be a, a prominent question than how to do <laughs> a kind of a thing there so that that is there but uh, uh that is another concern that our students uh, so our students they are very poor in use of technology that was one of the uh, reason the questions that we have to face time and again uh so those were the years uh, these things were happening now many teachers when i was uh, training and i was very strongly arguing in favor of technology and was telling that well infrastructure is growing very fast you will have infrastructure your students will also learn everything they will learn as a, as a part of constructivism which lev vygotsky uh, had very beautifully said that people will learn from a given environment our students are learning from environment they will they will be much better equipped in terms of technology than we are so be ready uh, be ready with those that future that is going to come so that is the arguments i used to give uh, many senior teachers uh, uh, would argue with me and tell that well can you do all this thing what you are talking about because we think that in india it is not possible that you can in a big way integrate technology and and see that students are also uh, working on that that is not possible in indian context uh, you are giving examples and other thing that that may happen in developed countries but in developing countries this is very challenging uh, well i i personally took that as one of the challenges for me also huh? that well let me try so uh, in a pg department where i teach uh, so that is maharaja krishna kumar singh ji bhavnagar university uh, uh, to give a demography of bhavnagar bhavnagar is uh, not as such a very big city it is uh, mahanagar palika it is it is municipal corporation but uh, uh, as compared to like if those who know gujarat's uh, demography or do gujarat's uh, map they will say that uh, surat is very developed baroda is highly developed ahmedabad uh, is a very developed city uh, these are the developed cities uh, there uh, then you will go down to cities like rajkot uh, and then at the third level i would put bhavnagar as the third level in the hierarchy of the development of the urban spaces Uh, in uh, yeah, yeah uh, i think professor uh, rajni's mic is on for us yeah. i don't know whether we can unmute that or not or yeah okay thank you uh, professor rajni thanks a lot uh, uh, okay so uh, uh, this is the hierarchy so uh, bhavnagar as a city uh, comes uh, at a third level so it is not like you can't say that it is it is like as developed as bombay obviously not chennai not uh, uh, it's not uh then it has a university so that is a good sign that the city has a university so you don't find universities normally everywhere it is a quite an old university it's a state run university uh though it is a municipal corporation and it has a university the the people who come to study in this university by and large are from rural spaces so the intake uh, 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 of this university is rural space now uh, this is what many teachers told me even if you are teaching in bombay university uh, teachers might say that most of our students are also coming from rural spaces uh, even if it is in delhi then also th there are students who are coming from far flung places uh, in different parts so uh, 
uh, a valid argument, uh, a very valid excuse that if you are in a big city doesn't mean that your students are also coming from a, a urban space. That is what used to happen with us uh, also. Uh, so uh, uh, that challenge that uh, can you work with technology? Uh, uh, I am talking about pre-pandemic time. Yeah? Uh, and can you bring a kind of a result that you desire to bring or not? So uh, 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 the challenge was this, that uh, you have to use technology, one, uh, uh, one thing that as a teacher, and then uh, you also have to see that your teachers, uh, your students also use technology. The students also use technology, then only that, that cycle or that circle of using technology or integrating technology in uh, the classroom environment can be fulfilled. Uh, only teacher using technology is not the complete cycle. Uh, it is a half cycle only. Students also uh, necessarily has to be the part. So, so we, we started working on various uh, learning management systems. Uh, uh, we started with Moodle earlier, uh, uh, and later on we switched over to Google Classroom. Uh, 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 and our, our objective was to see that uh, whatever our students are doing, uh, whatever our students uh, work, everything should be presented or archived in form of digital repository, some form. So if students have to, uh, Say something in the classroom discussion. They would make a small slideshow, and they will they will present it in terms of uh, PowerPoint presentation, which will be later on uploaded on some digital platform also. Uh, when we used to have presentations uh, of students, we would we would prefer to have a videography also, so that those videos can go to the YouTube channels of our students uh, uh, also. Uh, assignments are to be submitted, then we preferred or we asked our students to work on blog uh, and they can present, they can publish it on their blog uh, uh, also. So uh, thinking in that way that now students started having some kind of digital publications uh, in forms of uh, videos also and textual content also and slides also in three various forms uh, students started publishing uh, their things uh, there. Uh, and then what to do? Uh, then what to do now with all these things? So when we investigated uh, or when we tried to do a literature review of several things and reviewed some practices, uh, best practices uh, worldwide, we find that uh, 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 world-class institutes, uh, they prefer to have final assessment uh, or evaluation of the performance of students on the base of digital portfolios, uh, digital portfolios. So uh, we also thought that why why don't we introduce digital portfolios? Uh, 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 and when students are already presenting their things in terms of digital uh, 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 content, then why why don't we convert that into a digital portfolio? So uh, uh, I would like to share a screen uh, uh, to uh, uh, see this. Uh, I think uh, if uh, host can enable me to share a screen, then I can show a few things also, is it possible? Yes, yes, yes. Yeah. yes. So I would like to show some of the those things there. Yeah, so, uh, so digital portfolios huh, is was the outcome of uh, the, that, that thinking. Yeah, please, yeah. Do you see an option, sir? Uh, no, still not enabled, yeah. I think you have to make me co-host. I think maybe perhaps you will have to. Yes, sir. Done. Ah, yes. Okay. Do you see the option now, sir? Ah, yes, it is there. I'm, I'm sharing a screen here. Yeah. yeah. So uh, I was talking about uh, this uh, digital uh, portfolio uh, uh, things are there. Uh, yeah, I hope the th screen is visible. It is, uh, yes. Yeah, yeah okay. Uh, so, uh, just a minute. Uh, that, that, that was uh, rather the older site opened. Uh, uh, let me open the newer one.
Yeah, okay. And so, uh, looking at this, uh, and so uh, as a part of that UGC project, also a project blended learning, uh, obviously project ended uh, within within a year. But then uh, we realized that this is very interesting. Why don't we continue uh, with this idea uh, of uh, a digital portfolio, converting that? And so from uh, 2010, 12 onwards, uh, we started uh, working on uh, this. So uh, it's almost a decade long story now uh, of uh, a trieste with technology. Uh, and it is obviously beyond pandemic uh, also. So uh, all this, students uh, who were there, they, they prepared their digital portfolios. These are the older, older batches uh, there, and coming down the line till uh, the last uh, batch, which passed in 19, uh, uh, sorry, 2021. Uh, uh, this is what is turned into a kind of uh, uh, online meetings for everybody. Uh, so uh, uh, this, when we look at what what are they doing huh, in their digital portfolios, for example, if we take a, a sample example, uh, so a students prepare huh, a digital portfolio which has the collection of all the things they have done during their master's studies. Uh, so uh, here we find that. Uh, uh, like they have to write about how literature shaped them huh, when they deal with literature. They make a write-up on that. They take a kind of an objective uh, way of looking that what is the influence of literature uh, in their life also. Uh, but apart from that, they have regular uh, online tests uh, are there and uh, uh, various charts are prepared about their performances, which are getting reflected uh, in, in different uh, ways. So that what is the performance uh, throughout the, those things. Uh, we extensively use Google Classroom, and in that also we tend to see what is the performance of the students uh, in terms of percentage or uh, tangible marks, uh, even in, in this uh, uh, Google Classroom uh, things. And so uh, that, that is also coming on the portfolios. Um, then uh, even uh, this uh, various video resources which students prepare uh, as a part of their various assignments. Uh, and uh, their presentations that they have made uh, uh, also. Huh? Yes. So first, uh, I Earlier invite uh, was uh, in terms of, uh, uh, for example, uh, offline, face-to-face uh, -face we were dealing earlier. And then, uh, like this was the traditional mode of, of uh, the video uh, recording, uh, which uh, students are presenting in the classroom, physical, that is pre-pandemic time. And then as we switched over to the pandemic time, we turned into a kind of an online uh, presentations of those uh, 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 things. And then in an online, uh, in this mode, students were presenting their, uh, their, their, their things, but that is their video uh, videos about their presentations in different capacities that come uh, uh, on the portfolio. The last presentation for the day, uh, well, and uh, apart from this, they have all whatever activities they do, uh, for example, movie reviews, uh, then they prepare their blogs and put it on their digital portfolios uh, uh, there. Uh, or even if uh, whatever they have done, we, we insist that if you go back to your bachelor years of, and write something about whatever literature you have studied during your bachelor years and try to make a, a, a kind of a presentation on that uh, also here. Uh, apart from that, if they have any kinds of uh, uh, skills in painting or photography, uh, then that also can become a part of uh, a corner digital on, on this digital portfolio. Uh, that uh, uh, paintings, photographies, that also uh, they, they move, uh, present here on this uh, space. So I'm just giving a sample of one student's uh, digital portfolio where uh, uh, this all things are updated uh, regularly. So uh, here we see the students' photography, uh, the painting, uh, uh, it is all coming on the digital portfolio here. Uh, conferences and webinars, those students who have participated and they uh, put about those things and their presentations in various webinars uh, and presentations also. So it becomes a kind of a record of uh, whatever academic, non-academic activities uh, they have uh, done uh, during uh, all this uh, uh, two years uh, of study or they can extend up till five years of their uh, studies also. Uh, 
uh, if they have any uh, any sort of achievements, uh, uh, awards or other kinds of things, so that also they can put uh, here uh, in, in, in terms of uh, receiving of awards, photographs can be there uh, of those things uh, uh, there. Yeah, so this is uh, there. So a uh, uh, digital portfolio becomes something uh, that is uh, that is a record huh, of uh, all the activities, academic and non-academic. So uh, you just go through this and batch-wise you find list of the students and you click on uh, the things and uh, we can access huh, their digital portfolio. All these digital portfolios are managed by students themselves. Huh? It is uh, students who manage uh, uh, all these uh, digital portfolios uh, uh, there. Uh, and and it is uh, it is not in the control of teachers it is controlled by students themselves uh, uh, and this is what we we try to tell people that well uh, in even in a, a town like Baunagar, uh and the students uh, who come who is a mixed group from urban and rural space uh, they also can they can have their own personal website uh, wherein their digital portfolio is there so i'm not talking only about teacher having a website and uh, uh, managing the content and doing the things that is one side of a story but we have to extend that to the other side the students also have that skill necessary digital skill to have one's own website one's own youtube channel one's own blog or whatever things are necessary for digital presence should be uh, with uh, even uh, even uh, students then uh, this uh, the very idea about uh, digital skills and everything gets materialized. And while doing all these things, uh, you don't give like more time in teaching all this thing. Right? This is these things are learned as a byproduct, as a byproduct. So we devised a system that senior students uh, who has uh, studied one year in the department will teach to the juniors. So uh, we require workshops uh, for that. But who are the resource persons? Senior students are the resource persons. And the juniors will be trained into that. Then junior becomes senior and they will train the newcomers huh, in those things. Initially, when we started in eh, 2010, 11, 12, we also have to uh, ask students to uh, make their email IDs huh, first. So we have to start, they, we are coming without email ID also. Nowadays, the things are completely different. Now everybody has uh, their uh, 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 email, email, email ID. Huh? Everybody has got their email IDs now. So that is how I tell that. Well, things will advance. One at one phase, you have to you have to teach them how to have email ID or why to have email ID, yeah? and how means like you should have your proper name in email ID. That also we have to teach them, like in Aadhaar card or in your driving licenses or, or in your mark sheets. You can't have funny names. Huh? You can't say that, well, I love this name, eh? never say die, for example, never say die at gmail.com. Uh, so, uh, well, those things doesn't work. Uh, it has to be professional. It has to be something that is very important, like your marches are important. Your driving licenses are important. Your other card is important. You can't have any name there. Yeah? The same way email ID also is something very serious. Uh, when you will go into the professional life, you will be ashamed of showing your email ID, which you made in a very early teenage days. So, uh, well, you have to, uh, but learn that, learn those things uh, that email is your identity. Uh, and in digital life, it is very integral part uh, of our existence. So uh, they, we, we have to teach, uh, they, they used to come without email ID, but when they left, they left with their own website, which is prepared by their own, uh, their own self. Uh, their own. So, uh, uh, this, but nowadays it is very easy. Nowadays it is not very tough and challenging as it was in those days. So in those days we have to give technology to students. We have to give laptops to students because those were not the years of smartphones yet. It was not the days of 4G network also. So uh, whatever internet was available in the department we have to give. And we used to run, uh, uh, we used to have a lab also, language lab. So that was that resources were used and then we also used to have laptop bank so we had some around two dozens of laptops and we were allowing students to carry laptops to their homes like the way uh, libraries give books uh, to the students we used to give laptops also uh, to students uh, uh, to carry home also at times and work uh, here 
uh, we have to give more space uh, at the department in those days. Uh, so on holidays, we have to keep our department open uh, so that students can uh, work uh, there. We have to open department early in the morning till late in the evening also to give extra time for the students to work uh, so, uh, in those days. So we have to give, uh, have to give, we have to give devices. We used to give internet also. We have to give more time also, uh, 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 space also. So time, space, infrastructure, everything we have to provide in those years. Uh, suddenly after 4G revolution, uh, uh, once Geo launched 4G and then all the network service providers started providing Geo, uh, our work suddenly reduced. Uh, and coming down to 16, 17, uh, 2016, 17, 18, uh, students uh, were having their devices, smartphones. They were coming with their own internet now. And uh, they used to work in their own spaces at their own time. So see, suddenly what was so integral, that time you have to give, space you have to give, infrastructure you have to give. Within four, five, six years, you don't have to give infrastructure now. You don't have to give internet. No time, no space. Uh, now everything is working on its own uh, there. And the skills that we acquired as a teacher, we learned a lot from those experiences. Now it is very useful to us uh, in this sense. Uh, but even now, then in coming down to 16, 17, 18, then we started getting good success with digital portfolios and digital way of dealing with the things. Uh, we started again talking about that with the other people <laughs> in workshops and seminars. Still, we are not getting the result. <laughs> like we get a result with our students now. Our students are convinced they are working. Initially, they have a problem, uh, but later on, they get settled down with the thing and they realize that, well, it's good to learn with technology. Uh, you're not learning technology, you are learning literature with technology. So uh, it's quite fun. Uh, and the skills which are necessary in professional life, you are acquiring uh, uh, there as a byproduct. But when we were again talking with teachers and other institutes, we were still getting, not getting the desired results, still complaints and other things were coming uh, there. Uh, and then came Corona. <laughs> and then 2019, uh, uh, Corona. Uh, and then suddenly everybody started switching over uh, our technology because, well, we were forced to do now. It was not our choice. <laughs> so by choice, we were giving excuses and we were still uh, uh, pushing a little bit back. We are procrastinating. Uh, procrastinating that well uh, came and uh, uh, there was no option available uh, uh, except for going to uh, the uh, uh, maybe some in, uh, uh, network problem i'm seeing some signal there but i think my voice is reaching out to the people uh, yes, yes, sir. Uh, yes yeah, yeah. Okay. yeah there was uh, the message that my internet is a little bit unstable okay so uh, then then this corona time came and people were uh, teachers were forced to move on to technology uh, not only all those new teachers who were still not using technology but even people like us uh, who were using extensively technology before that were also forced to learn lot many new things because uh, uh, when we were using technology we were not thinking of live interaction with students we were still having a classroom environment where technology was taught. So even if I want to take online tests uh, 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 and through Google Classroom or other kinds of things, there are lots of classroom space where you were giving instructions to the students, you were discussing tests in the classroom, uh, but you have never thought that all these things, if you have to do online, how are you going to do? Where are those platforms uh, that were not explored uh, at all? Uh, and then suddenly we have to learn a lot. Huh? So, so days and nights, we have to read a lot uh, and we have to explore Zoom, huh? which became very popular. Like we are also on Zoom platform, one of the most popular platform during this time. WebEx, Cisco company provided MS came with Teams, uh, Google came with Meet huh? and innumerable such platforms started emerging. So uh, as, as, a, as a teacher trainer, uh, also we have to explore all those platforms. We have to see what is good and what is bad, it's all those things. So that was also a very challenging task for us. So throughout the nights, we have to watch so many videos from where we were learning. And during daytime, we were putting it into practice and whatever worked, we were using it for teacher training program. So that was, that was the life in the initial few months of the lockdown. 
and it was good that it was locked down uh, and so you were uh, uh, having ample time uh, to work and exploring all those things now something amazing we learned during those years and uh, during those months and that was that uh, everything we can learn on our own that was one thing so on our own means now there is nobody who can tell you that what to do so you have to you were completely on your own and what was helping you it was youtube videos there were many people who were uploading how to do videos or do it yourself diy which became a buzzword during this time do it yourself and there were a lot many people who had a kind of a passion for uploading such videos and and, and those videos are very helpful very helpful i keep on telling my students eh, and to other teachers also that if those people were not uploading the videos uh, how would we learn the things eh? very tough so we are very thankful to all those uh, youtubers eh, uh, or social media people who upload the things and their contribution is very valuable in digital culture eh? all these people and if you have a passion for those things uh, well move on eh? keep on uploading videos prepare videos upload it is very helpful to people it is one of the wonderful wonderful form of doing service uh, uh, community service in this time yeah? uh, i extend this idea uh, with my students and fellow teachers and tell that uh, those were the days when we were told that 10% of your income should be given to temples or for charity uh, that is what we were told and uh, it's good habit uh, give charity 10% of your income nowadays we tell that 10% of the of the total videos that you watch or download upload back to youtube or to any other platform give back to the internet at least 10% you should give back in terms of your blogs in terms of your websites in terms of your videos give it back to internet and cultivate that habit of saying thank you to all these people acknowledge their contribution in digital life is tremendous now uh, that is what we have to we have to do with uh, uh, our students new generations that don't only be downloaders also be uploaders so now we don't ask the teachers that are you using ict or video resources in your classroom we ask now do you have your website do you have your blog do you have your youtube channel let us see what is there on your youtube channel if you as a teacher you don't have a youtube channel where you are not a teacher of 21st century or any other platform to share videos if you do not have your website or blogs to and and i mean by that is for content sharing that is for students not only for your passion like i i mean i may love to play games or drama or mountaineering or adventure sports anything and i may write a blog on that also i may be a, a, a good traveler uh, and i would write a blog on traveling also uh, that is fine good but what about your academic blog academic website academic youtube channel that is so if teachers don't have that then uh, we would say that well you are not qualified to be a teacher in this time uh, uh, you should have that uh, in, in most of the training programs uh, whenever I, i i get a chance to interact with teachers uh, i i i surely ask these questions to everybody uh, that do you have your blog uh, website youtube channel or not and still i am getting rather a very dull reply or not satisfactory answers not many teachers are still having their youtube channels uh, uh, the numbers have increased now as it was before corona now we get a few people to tell that we have youtube channel uh, earlier it was complete zero now we have some numbers there but it's still 10 20% in youtube channel when it comes to website or blog still the numbers are very low Uh, very very low also so even after corona pandemic and other things uh, the numbers have not increased a lot in that term uh, and uh, if if teachers are listening here and this is going live and youtube will be there facebook will be there and if anybody is listening my my ultimate message coming out from the trials to with pandemic is this only that uh, if teachers will not learn now then perhaps they will learn never <laughs> no because this is a golden opportunity i say golden opportunity and deliberately i say this for teachers i know pandemic is not good for economy for many people it has been terrible many people died suffered a lot 
but as a teacher, I mean to say that it is it is something wonderful that happened. Many teachers who were staying away from the technology, they have come to technology. They have started using that. Uh, but there are many who are just waiting that as soon as the unlock, uh, this everything gets unlocked, we will again switch over to our traditional classroom. And they will perhaps never think of using a, a technology also. So I tell uh, many times to uh, our, our uh, uh, teaching fraternity that even in this time, even when you are now uh, doing things in, in traditional uh, mode, so then also keep on uh, having video recordings of your classroom. Once you are now as habituated to work with, uh, with uh, technology, then keep on facing camera. Uh, facing camera is not an easy task. It is a very difficult task. If you have acquired that habit of talking with camera, uh, having camera in your classroom, then keep on recording, uh, even if it is traditional uh, uh, classroom. So uh, record your- What is the meaning? Record your uh, classroom interactions uh, and uh, uh, make students part of that interaction. So uh, it is not only you, but uh, even your students, when they are speaking, uh, uh, you can roll over a camera over a students also, uh, and uh, let them also be part of, of that classroom interaction, which is going over YouTube channel uh, or other things uh, also. That is what uh, we, we, we keep on uh, telling that, well, don't just make your traditional classroom only uh, uh, traditional, uh, but uh, uh, in your classroom, you might have a PowerPoint uh, presentation also, you might be using traditional board also in the classroom. Uh, uh, but still, let everything be recorded and let it go to YouTube. Students can watch it later on, uh, and student can uh, students still can explore through those videos also. So don't stop doing uh, that. Is what we, we tend to tell uh, people in different uh, ways also. But we don't know how how people are going to take all these messages, how they are going to do. Uh, it is not like making a show off of something. Uh, it is not so. Show off is something where you don't have a caliber and you make a show. Uh, this is uh, something that you are doing, you are projecting. Uh, and there is nothing wrong in that. Uh, what you do, you project. When people don't do the things and project, that is problematic. <laughs> that is, so uh, that is how people can. Uh, and in, in this during this time, it was a wonderful time for us to learn a lot, many things. Uh, 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 during this, I talked about uh, having websites and other things. Uh, and uh, let me share this screen uh, again here to uh, see a few more uh, things here. Uh, during this time, we, we prepared, uh, I, I prepared a full uh, a website uh, for, uh, for the, this all things. And uh, uh, a website which is completely dedicated to the, uh, the online activity. So uh, uh, when I dealt with uh, the, the teachers uh, the, uh, of uh, different states, uh, whatever I have done, uh, uh, there is, it is there from, uh, there is Assam or Karnataka, uh, where uh, I dealt with the teachers in online mode, teacher training that we have done. It is all put here on this particular website with Chennai teachers uh, uh, when we dealt uh, uh, the content there uh, with the teachers of Meghalaya uh, uh, college uh, uh, teachers, the recordings are made of the sessions and uh, uh, put here uh, this. Uh, with our university also, with uh, our, our university, we had uh, one long week of training program in the initial days of uh, lockdown, first, first wave of Corona. Uh, and uh, uh, during uh, that time also, uh, we, we, we dealt with various uh, uh, things uh, uh, there. Uh, and apart from this, uh, 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 our students were also engaged with uh, online activities. So we had virtual literary festival uh 2020 and even all those things are available that what what and how we have carried out uh, all the sessions of our uh, program was uh, uh live streamed uh, uh, virtual festival was live streamed and the students uh, participated very actively it was a three long days of uh, doing a virtual literary uh, festival uh Students' uh, um, uh, webinar presentations. This was this was uh, what I did during this time. The students' webinar. Yeah, this is uh, so during last 
two years uh, uh, how students dealt with the things and here webinar presentations uh, whatever they have uh, done that all is also recorded uh, and put on this particular website uh, teachers day also we celebrated in a virtual form uh, virtual teachers day uh, and uh, students uh, prepared their uh, videos uh, students uh, prepared their videos as a teacher so uh, if teachers are preparing their videos why can't uh, uh, students prepare their their videos and so students also prepared uh, their learning module uh, and uh, it was live teaching by uh, the students uh, during the last two teachers day a uh, couple of webinars that we organized uh, this was an international webinar that we organized uh, uh, in, in a virtual mode uh, uh, on elt and this was on epidemic literature and epidemic kind of a thing uh, 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 there wherein uh, we had a very good participation from uh, across uh, uh, India. Across India, people uh, participated uh, in, uh, in this, uh, from Kashmir to Kanyakumari, from Assam to Gujarat, Rajasthan, uh, people were uh, actively involved in this thing there. And what is in interestingly surprising uh, in, in all this thing uh, is this also that uh, you have not printed a single paper, a single page for organizing national or international webinars. Everything through social media. So see what is the power of social media. You can reach out to the nook and corner of your country. And we had in international webinar, we had participation from more than 12 countries. So see the power of technology that it reaches out. And it is all paperless. Uh, paperless. There were around 80 to 90 paper presentations by participants and uh, obviously plenaries by the other people. We had a speaker from Australia, Belgium, Malaysia, uh, and many other countries also. But, but no, no printing, uh, everything paperless uh, and quite a successful story that we got with uh, all those uh, things uh, also uh, there. Uh, finally, finally, and it will be some good questions that also we will take, but uh, finally, as we move on to this, uh, uh, during this time, as we used to have a blended mode of uh, classrooms uh, uh, also. So during blended mode of classrooms, uh, also we, we organized, uh, we, we arranged the classes in different capacities. Uh, and uh, uh, this was something very interesting. Uh, this this uh, is a glass board, uh, which we prepared uh, here during uh, this this time and uh, and this was very useful during complete online classes because uh, the feeling of doing board work uh, uh, is amazing the, the pedagogy would say that uh, when you do a board work either in traditional classroom or an online classroom it has an altogether a different feeling on learners uh, learners when they slowly learn uh, through the board work of teacher it is more everlasting in terms of memory also. And there is a process of learning that happens when board is used. Uh, but that was lacking uh, in online, like, like right now I am just uh, sitting and talking, uh, 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 may not be very effective every day just to sit and listen. So we prepared this glass board and we put a webcam on the other side uh, and uh, teacher is teaching uh, over the other side of uh, the things uh, Then it was, very effective uh, thing. Uh, and uh, the end result of this also is very interesting. Uh, like, for example, uh, if I uh, uh, show, uh, yeah, this is one of the, the examples if I would like to share. Yeah? So uh, how, how would on the other side, each uh, students would Dear feel uh, when let us see teacher is about... teaching over a glass board uh, kind of a thing. So uh, uh, in, in a glass board uh, dynamics, uh, this is how whatever you write, uh, uh, the, the learners on the other side would uh, would see that uh, in, in this uh, capacity. So uh, it is like teacher, you are facing a teacher, you are uh, facing uh, the teacher and uh, things are going on uh, before your eyes. Uh, so learners can feel the teacher is really actively involved with uh, this activity in, in, in the classroom uh, also. So this is how uh, this this uh, 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 well something that we devised uh, during this time. And uh, uh, why and, do they move in this particular thing? Uh, and uh, various things that we were experimenting in different ways <laughs> to teach drama uh, and, and, and other things. So these were some of the ideas that we were trying out during this uh, this pandemic time. So a uh, trial with uh, a pandemic with teaching 
during this time was very interesting. It was uh, full of uh, lots of learning, enjoyed a lot, uh, learned a lot, and explored technology in a very interesting way uh, during this last two, two years there. So that was that was what I wanted to share in this talk. And uh, thanks uh, a lot to Dr. Sudhir Nikam for giving me this opportunity to have this interaction uh, with uh, uh, everybody. Uh, Dr. Sachin Labade also is there. So uh, good evening, Dr. Sachin. Uh, and maybe many of you will be attending on YouTube or Facebook. Uh, also, good evening to everybody. Thanks Thank you so much, sir. Thank you very much. I, I cannot emphasize on how important this was for coming up teachers, the teachers who are you know, going to become, the people who are going to become teachers, the students. This is very inspiring. So I, me, myself, I'm preparing to become a teacher and you completely shifted my perspective on what I should look up to as an idol if I want to become a teacher. Thank you, sir. I, I do have a little confession, though. <laughs> Uh, my email ID, I, I made it when I was in fourth grade, and it is called S H I V A M Shivam N I N J A Ninja at gmail.com. <laughs> and I still use it, sir. So. <laughs> yeah. yeah, so that is that is uh, very important now. There is an enter into professional life, yes, then uh, yeah, it is uh, one should have a proper uh, one. Yeah. Right, sir. So this is our identity, yeah? our digital space. Our digital presence is our, uh, and it has to be uh, very near to our real identity, right. and very near to the real uh, one. So virtual has to be as real as the real one, right. as the actual one. Yeah. yeah. And uh, like sir, uh, you said, what if the pandemic had stuck uh, ten years ago, say, uh, say twenty years ago? How would it, how would it have went then? Yeah. Yes. Yeah, of course. So uh, I, 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 that was a very good, interesting question that you have raised, and I think we all should uh, have this question. And so I was I mean, thinking that in I, I, 19, yes, yes. I asked this question because uh, during the pandemic, not only technology was at the very optimum point when it helped us or encouraged us to use it more, but also if it wasn't at this time, we would still have not been using it like we do now. So it yes, was, yeah. in a way, very helpful. And this was sort of the perfect time for it to have happened. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, so uh, uh, that's a very good question. And and uh, uh, what I am personally interested, I am not able to find any resource or any material to read on this. But if anybody who is on the other side listening to me, if you come across anything, then please share with me. What, what I'm looking for is this, that in 1918 to 1922, when there was Spanish flu, uh, uh, and uh, so many people died 100 years back uh, in Spanish. Mm -hmm. So now during those years, what was the life of academia? <laughs> what right. was the, So if everything was shut down, then obviously it was post World War. So academic life might not be very interesting or happening thing at that in those days. At least in Europe, it wanted because people were just coming out of World War. But still in other states, like in India or other things, during those things, how the academic life was moving on. If anybody has documented any of those things, then it is very interesting to read what, was, what they were doing during those years. You have to think of complete lockdown, complete shutdown of academic things. You're not allowed to go. I got one meme, meme nowadays, and people are not reliable a lot. He said that Newton uh, invented gravity when there was egg, and so he was not able to do anything. So he has done that. What have you done in lockdown? <laughs> so, <laughs> I mean that it, it says. Yeah. Right. Uh, but well, uh, very interesting question. And the Spanish flu year that was hundred years back. What was the academic life huh, during those years? This time we were able to sustain us. Not only sustain, but we were able to explore. Uh, new things also uh, during this uh, this time yeah. right sir and i would like to thank you once again sir for all the for all this informational content because uh, when i become a teacher and when all of the other people who are inspired by you and people like you who create such informational content sir when we become teachers i don't uh, i wonder what would the importance of infrastructure be then because uh, see uh, 
all the colleges, all the knowledge giving, it can happen online as well, right? Like you're doing it. And then does this mean that for the future, future generations, the schooling can completely be online? Yeah. Will the school buildings and the school infrastructure, Blackboard, all that still be the same after this? Like you said, people are just waiting. Teachers are just waiting for it to go back to how it used to be. But will it ever go back to how it used to be? Yes. Yes. So uh, I, I think it will go back and we need that physical because at least when it comes to schools, uh, uh, I, I look as like we have to see schools and colleges, higher education and school in a different way. Uh, because uh, higher education is, uh, is preparing for now professional life, huh, which is quickly the learners, students are going to jump into a life. Whereas schools are still preparing for not only life, but higher education also. So uh, for the, the schools, uh, what is necessary is gathering is very important because there is social learning. And uh, in online mode, what we like is social learning, learning together, teamwork. Uh, and uh, sports is necessary. People have to play the games because sports will teach us a lot many things, how to win, how to get defeated, how to how to uh, how to digest the victories as well as sustain in defeats also now without that uh, our learning is incomplete so uh, we need schools uh, for outside activities sports activities cultural activities uh, togetherness teamwork so the schools uh, should not go completely online but so far as higher education is concerned it is possible people can work and learn and acquire a lot many learning from online modes uh, MOOCs, as we know now, MOOC, Massive Online Open Courses. And I myself has done more than half a dozen of MOOCs uh, from University of London, Pennsylvania University, Australia, uh, 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 many of the universities from US also, world-class universities they offer. Harvard also, uh, I, have, I have done one course, uh, short-term courses I have done as to understand what is it to be an online learner, because we were not that fortunate in those uh, years when we were in schools or colleges that there was any form of online teaching or learning. So to experience that, and I tell many times uh, our students, uh, teachers also, that you have to be online learner before becoming online teacher. <laughs> so most of us do not have an experience of online learning. And so when we are on, on online mode, we are just replicating the traditional teaching in online mode. And so we are failing also. And that is the reason that we are failing eh? because we don't understand eh? what is it to be online. So when I did that, I realized that, well, it is possible. You are you remain located, you do your regular work, you don't take a leave from anywhere, you don't travel anywhere, and yet you can acquire a good uh, uh, knowledge from world-class universities. So for higher education, I would surely look that it has to switch over in a greater extent uh, towards online mode, but schools should have uh, lots of gathering, uh, social learning, is something very, very important here. Okay, so uh, can we switch off now? Okay, or any other observations or questions then? Yeah. Okay, shall I log off now then? Yeah. Yeah, okay.